What's up, Dan Martell here, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this video, I wanna share with you how to lead your team using a transformational leadership strategy, not a transactional one, because that's probably what you're doing today, to-do lists and checklists and all that fun stuff. And be sure to stay at the end where I share with you uh, how to get a copy of my Precision Scorecard template. It's the structure I use to guide my team during our weekly syncs. Every week, the metrics, the numbers, I'm gonna give you a copy of that at the end of this video, so be sure to stick around. So here's the challenge. When I was running my company, Clarity.fm, I had a global team, people working in different parts of the world, all over the place, and the challenge is, is that when you grow teams, 30, 40, 50 people large, it's hard to understand who's doing what. Most entrepreneurs are leading their team in a way that is very much, they tell them what to do. The problem with this, if you think of it like over a timeline, you can only have so many people that you're telling, telling them what to do before from just a pure management bandwidth. This is pure math. You don't have enough hours in the day. So you get tapped out. Most entrepreneurs kind of tap out about a million and a half in revenue. And the reason why is because that's how they lead. They lead in a transactional strat, uh, st structure and it has an upper limit of what they're able to do. What I want to teach you instead is how to do a transformational. When I applied this to Clarity, because I went through this, this place of like just being frustrated with everybody and nobody knowing how to kind of manage themselves and nobody sees the vision the way I see it to a point where honestly my team rocked, you know, and it's, it's really about, you know, empowering the team and working through your team that's going to allow you to get bandwidth. This is everything. It's like you want a new project, you want to start a new project, great. Do you have the management bandwidth? you need to work through your team. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you kind of the two methods and how to think strategically about transformational versus transactional. The first method is transactional. It's how most entrepreneurs lead their teams today. The way you wanna think about it is very simple. First, you tell them what to do, so you tell. Second, you check that it got done. And then third, you tell them what to do next. So it's tell, check, and next. And some of you guys are going, how else are you supposed to do it? That's how I've been doing it for a decade. And I'm gonna teach you a totally different way, but here's the reason why this, is, this doesn't work is, one, if you have people coming to you and saying, hey, I wanna talk about getting a raise, or what about this perk, or you know, I heard this company is you know, uh, ironing their clothes for their employees, or they've got a, you know, a co-ed basketball team that they sponsor, and all these other perks. If your team's coming to you, it's probably because, on those things, it's because they don't feel like they're being um, they're not growing. So when people don't feel like they're getting enough out of a relationship, they start asking for other things. And that's what happens in a transactional structure. Because you're treating people as a process, okay? You can't treat people like automation and software. You wanna treat them like they're part of the business and give them accountability and, and really create a scenario where they're growing as individuals. This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's, it's self-actualization. So there's transactional, that's number one. That's what most entrepreneurs do. They tell, they check, and they tell them what's next. What I wanna offer up is a totally different approach. The second way of doing this is transformational leadership. The way it works is very simple. One, we don't tell people what to do, we talk about outcomes that we wanna achieve. We describe the end state. We're very clear of where the mountaintop is. Think about this, if you can just tell your team and be crystal clear, mountains are easy because you can point to the top and you say, we're gonna be standing up there, we're gonna look around and it's gonna be great, we're gonna be healthy and we got there in this amount of time and everybody made it safe and all these different characteristics of the outcome you wanna achieve. Mountaintops are easy, but maybe it's a new website, maybe it's a, a new marketing funnel, maybe it's hiring a salesperson, making sure they're productive. What we need to do is number one, is set a very clear outcome for what we want our team member to achieve, and then work with them to collaborate kind of next actions and strategies to get to that outcome. So that's one. Two is we wanna focus on measuring the progress they're making. So we need to let them know how to measure. And think about this from a human point of view. We don't need to tell a kid when they're playing hockey or basketball or soccer, my kids play hockey, we don't have to tell them to play better. 
We don't have to be like, hey, you need to learn to pass the ball or, or move faster or get the rebound or whatever it is. They just do it because they understand how the score is being kept. They're playing a game. They see the scoreboard. They know that when they get the thing in the net or you know whatever, that they get an extra score on the board. And then they say, well, what did I do last time to get that? And how can I get that faster? Your team want the same thing. They want to know that, hey, if you're going to measure, if you want a new website, what are you going to measure me on? You're going to measure me on site performance, so we want the site to be faster. We want uh, customers to fill out more forms, so maybe it's conversions. We want there to be more traffic, because if it's faster, we should increase our traffic. Um, and, and by giving them the measurement, then they have a clear understanding of how their progress or their outcome is going to be measured. And then the third is you want to coach them to success, okay? Coach. You want to treat them like a coach would with a player on uh, a professional um, sports league. And think about this, like, instead of telling people what they got to do, check it got done, and tell them what to do next, now all of a sudden you're coaching them to get outcomes and measure things so that they know how they're doing so you don't have to be the bad guy. And when they run into issues, you can actually support them and say, hey, have you thought about this? Do you know this person? Would you like to make an introduction? I remember one of my coaching clients was frustrated with their new growth team because the team couldn't come up with great strategies to go run tests and experiments against. And I challenged him, are you really coaching that person or that team to success? Because you knew by putting those five people together and giving them an outcome uh, and measuring, you did all that stuff great, that they were never gonna win. They were never gonna be successful. What you should have done is said, hey, do you think maybe bring in, because like, if you've got 20 years of experience in something, maybe you're an incredible uh, builder, creator, programmer, designer, et cetera. If you've got 20 years of experience, you can't expect your team who has two years, one year, maybe no experience to get the same outcomes. And you're just setting them up for failure. So coaching is different. Coaching is saying, hey, I think there's this really incredible consultant that I could pay for 500 bucks to come in to spend an hour with you to ideate different strategies. And just ask yourself, if my team's gonna be successful, how can I coach them to get outcomes without having to tell them what to do by putting scenarios and people and structure in the way they work so that they can succeed. And if you do this, your team will feel empowered, they'll feel like they're growing every day within your organization, and they're gonna want to contribute to improve their score. This is the power, and what's neat is from a management bandwidth, there's an upfront cost, but after a few months, let's call it six months to nine months, your team starts to understand how you operate, and, it, and they don't need to come to you as much anymore, and all of a sudden, you get your time back. And the beauty, as you grow the organization, the team, the startup, is that they start managing their people like that. Because what you're probably experiencing today is your team is frustrated because the people that report to them don't do what they say they're gonna do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because they're managing with a transactional leadership strategy. You need to coach them in a way that's more transformational, and then through osmosis, they will start communicating down to their team using that same way. So those are the two. Real quick recap. One, transactional is bad, it stacks up. You could probably get to about 10 to 12 people until you max out for management bandwidth. And number two, transformational leadership is really about creating a place and a way of working that's empowering, that's actually more productive, and that gets you your time back in a highly leveraged way as you grow your leadership team. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I want to share my precision scorecard template. So it's what I use every week with my team. In the template, it has a few key elements that you've probably not seen in other kind of reporting or scorecarding um, strategies. One, it's funnel metric base in regards to the top to the bottom of how you measure. And I do an open book uh, strategy with my team. So you can put the financials at the bottom or not, but think about top of funnel, mid funnel, and bottom customer success type activities. The strategy of measuring every week, so you build that cadence and also the calculations of actual versus target on a monthly and a quarterly basis. And just really the, the structure. So you can click the link below to get your copy of my Precision Scorecard there. And if you like this video, I'd encourage you to click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be sure to share this with somebody that you care about that you think could get a lot of benefit from watching it. As per usual, I want to challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business. And I'll see you next Monday. Is that from 300? Are you not entertained? Yeah, it's from 300. <laughs>